14-year-old budding guitar maestro, a familiar face at Bay Area Studios, he soon began jamming with Greg Raleigh, singer and keyboardist for the Latin fusion supergroup Santana. I used to go pick him up from high school, because he really wasn't going to high school. He was there, but he wasn't going to high school. I split with him and we go play music. Impressed by his young friend's wicked guitar licks, Greg helped Neil make a demo tape, then passed it along to Santana Road Manager, Herbie Herbert. There's just a San Francisco teenager with a guitar and a rock and roll dream. Neil Sean is 15 when he starts cutting school for jam sessions. He's too young to drive, so he has to be picked up by fellow musician Greg Raleigh. In 1971, Neil fully drops out of school to get a jump start on his destiny. He joins singer, keyboardist, and trusty driver Greg in Santana without Greg or itching to chart their own musical path. So they leave Santana to form a new band in 1973. It's dubbed the Golden Gate Rhythm Section until a joint smoking roadie suggests they change the name to Journey. Impressed by his young friend's wicked guitar licks, Greg helped Neil make a demo tape, then passed it along to Santana Road Manager, Herbie Herbert. If I heard this demo tape, it would pour me today. He was only 15 years old, it would still wreck me that a kid could play that at that level of expression. And so, and you gotta get that kid to come and hang around. They gotta meet this kid. Herbie was quickly taken with the young guitarist, and so was Carlos Santana, who asked Neil to join his group in the summer of 69. So at just 15 years old, Neil left high school and embarked on a life of rock and roll. I just thought it was part of the norm at that time. I don't know. I look back at it now and I realize that it was a pretty amazing time period in my life. And it just freaks me out every time I see an old Santana video. I'm looking at myself and I'm like, I'm a baby. Kirby decided to build a new band, putting the spotlight on Greg's creative keyboard playing and Neil's stunning axe work. Neil was, I thought, the quintessential guitar expressionist of the time. We wanted to say, hey, there's something sophisticated that can go on with music. Music can really take you somewhere. The band had no interest in pumping out pop. Instead, they indulged themselves with lengthy solos. Their style wasn't radio friendly, and neither was their name, the Golden Gate Rhythm Section. So we decided to do a radio promotion and get the fans to write in and give us their thoughts on what the band should be. Made. And they came up with the most horrendous names, Hippopotamus, Uncle Foreskin. Appalled, the band turned to their entourage. A member of their road crew finally came up with a name that stuck. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Pride of the West. They jammed a lot more longer songs, kind of like these experimental trips that they go on. In addition to Neil on lead guitar and Greg on keyboards and vocals, the band is rounded out with Ross Valerie on bass and Ainsley Dunbar on drums. As arena rock is really growing, they didn't really have the songs or the charismatic front man to really make it work. Journey tours relentlessly and releases three albums. No the hugely successful rock band, Santana. The ashes of Santana. Kirby Herbert had ambition and he had vision and he saw something. It was my concept, it was my idea. I basically drafted or recruited each and every individual in the entire organization, musician by musician, starting with Neil Sean. Kirby took guitarist Neil Sean and vocalist Greg Raleigh with him for the new project. Sean was a prodigious talent who had first come to Kirby's attention as a teenager. I said, holy smokes, that kid's 15? And he was offered a job in either Santana or in playing with Eric Clapton. Joined Santana. He played albums Santana 3 and Caravan and Soraya. No white boy better in the blues. That is a statement. 
Neil Schoen was a guitar star without any parallel in the rock scene at that point. He's a genius. Although Raleigh was the lead singer on million-selling hits like Black Magic Woman. Greg Raleigh was the matinee idol. He was the, the, the lead singer, the sex star, and possessed a tremendous talent. That pedigree, distinguished journey, day one. We all knew that this was the new band featuring Greg Raleigh and Neil Schoen, fresh out of Santana, the world's most popular rock band at that point. Alongside Neil and Greg, Herbie handpicked rhythm guitarist George Tickner and childhood friend Steve Miller Band bass player Ross Valerie. His bass playing was just right for Journey, no matter what we were trying to do. Where, whether we were trying to be a progressive jazz pop band or a progressive rock band. The final member to join in 1974 was British drummer Ainsley Dunbar. He was very well known for his work with Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention, so he was a solid, credible guy behind the drums. <laughs>